I think I might have had an ingenious idea on how to make this dress convertible. Let's bring these over. Hey, you. Sorry if I sound a little bit uh, rough. <laughs> I am just getting over a very nasty cold, but we're gonna persevere. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to go within the next couple of days, but maybe you do. <laughs> maybe you're like me and you're really picky about what you like and don't like in clothing. So you've decided to make your own dress to wear to maybe a wedding or a vacation or just a fancy night out, but you procrastinated. <laughs> also like I do sometimes, and you need it to be done very quickly and easily. Or alternatively, maybe you're a beginner sewer. You've done a few projects and you want to start your first big clothing project, but you're a little intimidated and you don't want it to be too difficult. I've got you both. <laughs> I was able to get this done in under eight hours. I like to challenge myself. I was really wondering in sewing, what tips and tricks could you use to do the least amount of work while reaping the most amount of reward? And that's what this dress is literally designed to do. Now, because I can, I'm going to split this into two four hour chunks, starting at 12 one day, and then going to the next day and starting at 12 again. But you could definitely do this in one day. As far as fabrics, I am using my quote unquote old bed sheets. I had really old bed sheets a couple of years ago, but they were very old to the point of where I used them until they ripped. <laughs> so it was an emergency. I needed bed sheets as soon as possible. And I could not find my dream bed sheets in my price range. I saw these at Walmart for $25. They were cotton. And while I liked the pattern, I really knew that it would serve better as a dress rather than bed sheets. So I bought them and made them my interim bed sheets until I could find the perfect sheets for me, which I now have. They're on my bed now. So it is now time to make these bed sheets into a dress. So I would recommend finding bed sheets of your own, whether you have an old pair or you thrift, like I usually do. I thrift a ton of old bed sheets. You get them for $5. If thrifting isn't really feasible for you, you can also just go to Target or Walmart and find some sheets for like 20 bucks. <laughs> you can also buy fabric if you would like to. Um, I would say you need maybe three to four yards. I'm not very good at estimating how much yardage people will need. So that's my best estimate. Now, before we get on to the design of the dress, really quickly, if you've been watching my videos and enjoying them and you haven't happened to subscribe, please subscribe. It really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next step. So for the design, first up are the straps, which are going to be extra long so I can tie them into bows. I really feel like these give the bang for their buck because they are literally just rectangles, but totally give a dramatic flair to whatever they're added to. Next is the bodice, which will just be long swaths of fabric, which is shirred at the bodice. That will create a defined upper body while allowing the bottom to be nice and flowy. Now this is the first part of the dress that I'm hoping to finish in four to five hours, but I wanted a secondary option if you're willing or able to work a couple more hours on the dress. So I'm going to add removable sleeves, which you can totally make permanent. I'm just obsessed with convertible clothing and a simple waistband to add even more definition to the waist. And with that, this is the final design. Let's move on to cutting out the fabric. Okay, it is time to get started. I am only a couple of minutes behind my own schedule that I imposed on myself. For this pattern, I'm only going to use two pattern pieces. First is a simple, long A-line skirt panel. I use this for every pattern. I'm just, instead of using it as a skirt, I'm gonna lengthen it, change this diagonal, this little line right here a little bit, which you'll see to make it more suitable for the entire body, and, a sleeve. I'm probably gonna lengthen this a little bit on the top and on the bottom, just so I have some wiggle room with what style I specifically want. This feels so soft. I'm so excited. Uh, this is gonna be probably the comfiest dress I have ever made. I think I might've had an ingenious idea on how to make this dress convertible. I have to think about it a little bit more. That'll probably be tomorrow's problem. While we're sewing, I'll think about it. I'll ruminate. I'll keep you updated on like what hour I'm on, whether that's hour one, two, three, just so you know how long it takes me to do every piece. But yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's get started. 
first step was to find the directionality of the floral pattern if there was one. I found that there were two directions you could place the pattern on without it looking weird. My favorite fabrics are one with no directionality, but this one at least gives you some options. So first I wanted to make the diagonal line on the skirt a bit more dramatic and also make it a bit less wide around the chest and torso area because Shirin can only do so much and I've had problems trying to take in too much fabric in the past. This one didn't really end up needing it, but I did go ahead and slim out the top by a couple of inches and added a few inches to the width and the length at the end. I ended up being able to cut out three of these skirt panels because they were on the fold line. I then cut out the elastic on the fitted sheet. We try our best here not to let anything useful go to waste, and I had a couple of ideas for this already covered elastic. The work is basically done for you. You can use any A-line skirt panel and puffy sleeve pattern pieces that you have sitting around, but just in case, I'll link the two patterns that these are specifically from in the description. For the sleeve, I added some length all around just to be sure I had some options going into the sewing, as well as for the removable sleeve idea I was thinking on. The last thing I did was open up the seams of a pillowcase to cut out smaller rectangles for my shoulder straps and waistband. Since the pillowcase is a huge rectangle, it is the perfect starting point for pieces like this. That all took about an hour because I also got a snack. <laughs> now you may be wondering, how are we going to take skirt panels and make them look like a dress? With shirring. <laughs> of course. If you have watched my videos before, you know that that is what I use on basically every project so that it looks beautiful and fitted, but I don't have to do a closure. You just slip it over your body. People have actually asked for a small shirring tutorial, which is what I'm gonna do in this video. I'll also show you or talk about a secondary option that you can do if your machine just doesn't want to do shirring. That will take maybe a little bit more time, but I think it's faster and easier than putting in any kind of closure. So yeah, we're gonna shirr the top. I am going to, wait a second. This is the uh, elastic from around the fitted sheet and I think I'm going to take a length of it and that's going to be the top elastic. When you start at the top of a skirt or the top of a dress, I wouldn't start with just shirring. I would add some elastic in there. It just adds some stability. It makes it harder to fall down. It just makes it more stable. So I'm probably gonna be using this length of elastic because it's already covered and done and in there. I'm probably gonna use this several times. <laughs> Let's get started. Once all the skirt panels were together, I took a length of that fitted sheet elastic and measured a comfortable length around my chest and started pinning it to the top of the skirt, making sure to stretch it out as I went so that it would look like a smooth transition and of course so it would actually be stretchy.
I stitched it as close to the bottom of the elastic as possible to make the seam look invisible. And just as I was finishing this up and starting the shirring, we are sneaking into the third hour. Now this style isn't for me, but you could definitely just add straps here and have a dress like this done in less than three hours if you like a bit more of a shapeless look or just want to put a waistband over this. But I had more to do to make it more my style. So let's move on to the shirring. You want to start with an empty bobbin and some elastic thread. Now one thing I want to point out is the difference between an elastic band and elastic thread. Elastic thread is quite thin and round and elastic bands are usually flat and thicker. So when you're shopping, be sure to look for elastic thread instead of elastic ribbon or elastic banding. It will look slightly thicker than your regular thread, but as long as it fits into your bobbin, it is golden. Start by hand threading your bobbin. This is very important. If you thread it through your machine, it will stretch and probably break the elastic and you want no or very little pull on the elastic. So try your best not to stretch it as you're filling up the bobbin. And then you thread it through your machine as you would any other thread using regular thread to thread the top of your machine. So you will have regular thread as your top thread and elastic thread as your bottom thread. Some people find that they need to adjust the tension on their machine. I've never had to, but if you're running into problems, you might wanna try that out. And then I just started sewing on a straight stitch about a quarter to half an inch below the seam I last made. Once you get around in a full circle, instead of stopping, cutting the thread and moving the needle to the next point, I simply keep sewing and gradually move my needle down another quarter to half inch below my last line of shirring. I think the least amount of times you cut the thread, the better. It just keeps the shirring tighter and together. You'll probably need to refill the bobbin a couple of times, which is fine, but try to use a continuous thread as often as possible. The more lines of shirring you do, the more elasticated the piece will become. Now I actually made a mistake here. You see how I'm sewing over folds here? Don't do that. That will actually make the length of fabric smaller and smaller as you go and you will eventually not be able to fit it over your head. My brain had just went into autopilot and wasn't paying attention, so I had to undo a few lines of stitching. You wanna keep it stretched out like this as much as you can. Going over some small folds is fine, but keeping the fabric stretched is super important. I've actually come up with two other alternatives to shirring. One is to use my skirt shirring trick on the bodice and deliberately place them like these examples here with a zigzag stitch. And the second is to add a short bodice lining layer, create channels and push the elastic through. Let's discuss. Um, I was able to get the shirring done in about four hours, like everything up to this point took four hours. And um, I messed up a little bit and had to redo it. It looks a little messy in here. It's so funny to me that I do shirring in almost every video and I've barely ever messed it up. And this one time that I'm like, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do shirring, I, I mess it up and I have to redo some of it. <laughs> Oh, the irony. But I do feel like the first time you try shirring, you're gonna have some problems. You're gonna run into something. And so I felt like that was an appropriate amount of time to give for shirring. Like that's probably the most time you'll have to spend on it. So, you know, 
think it all works out as far as timing. <laughs> so what I think I'm gonna do, I tried it on and I think it needs a little bit more of a cinch at the bottom. So I'm going to take this once again and um, I'm going to put that around my waist. So this will be at the top and at my waist. Nice, not suction. I just said it. Be a little more waist defining. There we go. So you know how during the Renaissance period, women would actually have their sleeves like stitched on to their dresses and they can interchange their sleeves. They would either stitch or there would be lacings to attach sleeves to bodices, which I think is very cool. And I think it should be brought back in some way, shape or form. In fact, I have a video, I think it was one of my first videos where I tried to do that with a crocheted cardigan. It is a very early on video of mine, but I'm still pretty proud of it. I'm proud of myself that I figured it out. We're gonna try it again here. I always love when clothes have like more than one style or it can be more than one piece of clothing. I'm thinking that if I can create a channel at the bodice area of like where my arms would be and then a channel through the top of the sleeve, I can then like poke a ribbon through like what you, like you would elastic and then you can either have it be sleeveless or have sleeves and I think that will work. I had an idea yesterday where it would go through the actual bodice and like have a little bow at the front. I think that will take too much time, but I'd like to try that in the future, maybe, perhaps. Let's see, I think I can get the main dress with the little straps, the little bow straps that I'm gonna put on them. And that can be done in five hours, I believe. So let's get started. I was getting a little lazy at this point, so instead of turning the extra fabric under, I just cut it to the very bottom of the elastic so I wouldn't have to worry about it. After replacing my bobbin thread back to normal thread, I then placed it at my last line of shirring and stitched it in place. Once again, making sure to keep everything as stretched out as possible. I then started on the long straps. I had made four three inch wide rectangles, folded them over, made a small seam at the long raw edges and at one short seam. Then I put a safety pin at the end and pushed the fabric through to the right side and then top stitched the other end to finish it. I put one strap in a good place at the front. I literally just picked my favorite area and started there. I then eyeballed a good placement for the second front strap where it would hopefully cover my bra straps uh, by holding it up to my body and stretching it out a bit. I then just copied the placement at the back. And I just copied the way I made the straps for the waistband, which was about twice the width and long enough to wrap around my waist twice with some extra for a bow.
Okay, so uh, right after that, I had a little work emergency that I had to work on, but at the five hour mark, there is a dress, which is very cool. That is a completed dress. I'm gonna spend the next couple of hours making some sleeves and doing the sleeve idea that I had. I might have to workshop it while I'm working on it. Let's try to figure out this um, detachable sleeve situation. Let's go. So here are some of my ideas that I quickly jotted down and they are so beautifully rendered and clear to anyone who isn't me. But I decided on the orange option with an elastic being attached to directly under the armpit of the dress and going into the top of the sleeve. So I started by making channels for under the arms by ironing under the raw edges. I then pinned it starting at the back strap and ending at the front strap on the same side by stretching it out. So basically encompassing your armpit <laughs> uh, and leave the ends open so you can pull a piece of elastic through. I just um, quickly stitched those ends under to make sure they were finished. Then I started on the sleeves. After sewing each sleeve together, I created a channel and leaving a couple of inches open so I could safety pin the end of an elastic, the width of my arm, and pull it through. I then securely sewed the ends of the elastic by backstitching and forward stitching several times and stitched over the last couple of inches of fabric to finish it. I then started on the top of the sleeve by making a very tiny hem so nothing would be unfinished. then folded it over one more time along the top leaving the armpit area open so that way the elastic could be threaded through but connect to the underneath of the dress. Lastly, I measured more of the elastic to fit comfortably around my shoulder. Um, 
Also, colds have been like rampaging through my family over the past couple of weeks and um, I'm starting to feel a little bit not so well. Uh, let's hope I'm not getting a cold. Yay. <laughs> I am very hot <laughs> and uh, very lightheaded because of the last vestiges of this cold. <laughs> I'm gonna make this quick. No notes basically on this dress. I do think that it's a little long at the back, but I think that's a me problem because my torso is really short, but I just kind of lift it up <laughs> and it tends to be okay. The fact that this came together so quickly is so cool. I thought it would and I was really hoping it would work out. Because this has been washed for two years, it is so soft. I think this is gonna be like my summer dress when I just need to wear something light and comfortable. On a second note, um, I've been wanting or I have plans in the future to do more intense projects. Because those will be so intensive, I might need to break it up with some like simpler ideas and I was thinking, what do you guys wanna see from me in that case? Do you wanna see styling videos, thrift hauls, uh, costume breakdowns of movies? Please tell me if any slash all of those sound good to you because um, they all sound fun to me. <laughs> so uh, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I hope you guys had a good time and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.